Welcome back to The, the Rare, Rare Hunters. Hunters. The series where we open classic Yu-Gi-Oh packs, pull rare cards, and then stake those cards in the outcome of a duel. And this week we have Soul of the Duelist, the first green set. Also the first set to introduce ultimate rare cards. I have a question for you guys. Do you have the soul of a duel? I know I do. So some of the rare cards that we can pull in this set include Horus the Black Flame Dragon, Arm Dragon Level 7, Hammer Shot, and Mind Crush. Among many others. So we're gonna get into this pack and see just what all we get. But first I'd like to thank Everybody who's given super thanks for this series, it really helps out a lot. Y'all are real MVPs. Yes, these uh, classic Yu-Gi-Oh sets can be quite difficult to come by. And are always expensive. But without further ado, let the hunt begin. So I'm going to be opening my packs first. Um, by the way, the reason that we are doing this all at the table is because the office is currently having some renovations, you could say. So uh, yeah, they really changed the look of these packs in this period of time. This square boxy frame thing going on, you got Horus standing behind Yugi. Let's see what we get. First pack. We're kicking things off with Level Up. That's actually a pretty fitting card. This introduced the LV series of monsters that you can level up. So this actually lets you skip the leveling up process and just summon a higher level one yourself. Arm Dragon LV3. So already getting plenty of level monsters. Mind Wipe. Mind Crush. This is a very powerful metagame defining card up until just a few years ago when they kind of changed how it worked. Rafflesia Seduction. Huh. This is an evil plant that will seduce you and take control of a face-up monster in your opponent's field. Masked Dragon, okay, cool. Malice Doll of Demise. Big Wave, Small Wave, and Gorgon's Eye. Another LV monster, Dark Mimic, LV1. Something I'm curious about actually is what the pull rates are on this set. Uh, I don't know because they sort of changed the rarity system and the amount of cards. Howling Insect, Ultimate Insect, LV1, Absolute End, the Trojan Horse. Goblin Calligrapher. I wonder if I could put Mind Crush to use in uh, duels like these. It's, we don't really search a lot of cards from our decks to our hands, so I have to be a little careful of that. But Dark Mimic LV1, Mind Wipe, Hate Hain, and our first foil card, Greed. Just Greed. Each time a player draws a card because of a card effect, they take 500 points of damage during the end phase for each card drawn. Element Soldier, oh yeah, the Element series of cards. Horus the Black Flame Dragon, level four. Horus' Servant, as long as this remains face up on the field, your opponent cannot designate Horus the Black Flame Dragon as the target of spells, traps, or monsters. Ninjutsu Art of Decoy, Howling Insect, level up. And, oh, whoa, got a ultimate rare, first ultimate rare of the series, Penumbral Soldier Lady. So. Uh, having pulled that, I can't say that I'm really sure what to expect next. I don't know if we can maybe expect another super, maybe expect an ultra. I know many of the ultimate rares are just alternate versions of rares, supers, and ultras from the set. Red Eyes B Chick, not Black Chick, is B Chick. Level Up, Noble Man Eater Bug, and oh, what? <laughs> okay, this is funny. Uh, I got a super rare Penumbral Soldier Lady, so I didn't know that this could happen, but in the same box I got her super and her ultimate rare form. Armed Dragon level three, Skull Dog Marin, Fusion Weapon, Armed Dragon level five, okay. So this will be a useful one actually. You can, what is this? Discard, send a monster from your hand in the graveyard to destroy a face up monster in your opponent's field with attack equal or less than the attack of the sent monster. So this is a once per turn, actually no, it's not even really a once per turn. You can use this as many times as you want. A good removal tribute summon with 2400 attack. Probably in my deck. Element Dragon, Heavy Slump, Element Soldier in the Graveyard in the 4th Dimension. Man, imagine if my ultimate rare had been the level 7 of this guy. Alright, only two packs left. Dark Mimic LV1, Two-Man Cell Battle, Sandwich, Unshaven Angler, and oh, a rare copy of Hammer Shot. This is the newest form of spell removal for monsters, um, or monster removal for spells. Destroy a face-up attack position monster with the highest attack on the field. This is great for getting rid of the strongest monsters your opponent has. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We hope you guys are liking it, but we just noticed that more than half of you who watch these videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So we'd really appreciate it if you just hit subscribe, just real quick, the button right down there. It helps us out a lot because it takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos and we want to be the first Yu-Gi-Oh! channel to reach a million subscribers on YouTube. But we need your help to do it. So yeah, just hit the subscribe button and that's it. All right, back to the video. All right, final pack. We'll slap it for good luck, as Larry might do. 
and see what the card pulling gods, what Master Merrick has in store for us. I've got Taunt, Red Eyes Bee Chick, Level Up, Noble Man Eater Bug, and Mystic Swordsman, LV2. Hmm, I believe this is actually Chris's favorite card, at least one of his favorite cards. Neo Aquamador, and Big Wave Small Wave. All right, so that concludes my boxes. It looks like we did get three foils, although two of them are duplicates, but one is ultimate rare, so I guess you can't complain too much. All right, guys, it's my turn to open up Soul of the Duelist. I don't know what Paul got, but it can't be what's better than in these packs. Something like that. All right, let's rip it open. Uh, okay, these packs feel different. I mean, it's the first green set, so I imagine they would feel a little bit different. First card we have is Hade Hain, Fusion Weapon, Skull da Dog Marin, Arm Draw. Whoa! Ultra Rare, Horus the Black Flame Dragon Level 8. Yo, this guy is super powerful, guys. Um, as long as it remains face up on the field, you can negate the activation and effect of any spell cards your opponent plays. This card is huge, but there's a huge caveat here. It can't be normal summoned and can only be summoned by the effect of Horus the Black Flame Dragon level six. So if I wanna make use of this, I have to see level six. So now, fingers crossed. Ritual Weapon, Malice Doll, Gorgon's Eye, and Rage Mooka Mooka. Next up we have Cemetery Bomb, Noble Man Eater, Level Up, Red Eyes, B Chick, Hammer Shot, very solid card. Graveyard in the Fourth Dimension, Element Soldier, Heavy Slump, Neo Aquamador. Cemetery Bomb, Dark Mimic, Mind Wipe, Hade Hain, Greed. Wait, is this an ulti? Oh wow, it is. Yo guys, do you see that? It, it's kind of hard to tell, but compared to our newer ultis where there's more textured foiling, but this one does have ulti textured foiling. All right guys, so I've pulled, I think two ultras now. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Sandwich, I've always loved this card. It's a, it's a cute guy. Ectoplasma, the super rare. Only once during either player's turn, each player tributes one face up monster on their side of the field and inflicts damage to the opponent equal to half that monster's attack points. Then Abyssal Designator, Ultimate Baseball Kid, love this guy, Absolute, and a Neo Aquamador. And I'm liking the cards I got, but I really want to see a Horus the Black Flame level six. Please, please come through. We have Skulldog Marin, Unshaven Angler, Taunt, Sandwich, Dark Mimic level three, so that means I can now do level one and level three Dark Mimic plays, Mass Dragon, Neo Aquamador, Absolute, and an Ultimate Baseball Kid. Taunt, Unshaven Angler, Sandwich, Two-Man Cell Battle, <gasps> It came, it happened. Horus the Black Flame Dragon level six. So what's really cool about this guy is unlike level eight, you can actually just tribute summon this. I don't have to special summon it with the effect of level four, which is nice, but I don't have to. Yeah, this, is, this guy's just sick. I believe it says that it's unaffected by the effect of spell cards. Yeah, this one's just unaffected, which is still pretty useful at 2300 attack. Oh yeah, I'll be using it. Oh, and Horus's Servant. This was meant to be, guys. This was just meant to be. Oh, man. We have Dark Mimic Level 1, Mind Crush, Mind Wipe, Red Eyes B Chick, Ojama King. I'm not using that. There. We have Taunt, Unshaven Angler, Sandwich, Two Man Cell Battle, Arm Dragon Level 5, Let me pull out. Enrage Mooka Mooka, Dark Factor of Mass Production, Horus Servant, and the Graveyard in the Fourth Dimension. So, make sure I didn't leave out any hollows because I was pulling like fire here. My pulls are Horus level six, Ectoplasma, Ultimate Rare Greed, and Ultra Rare Horus level eight. All I can say is, good luck, Paul. <laughs> You're gonna need it. Okay guys, so this is the deck I'm working with. I actually added in a few different strategies from Soul of the Duelist, so I'm hoping to see a few of them pan out. First of all, I have Penumbral Soldier Lady, which I'm wagering. She's actually not the worst card, although I don't really think that Alec is gonna be using a lot of light monsters, but if he is, it could swing over Blackluster Soldier. Also, Arm Dragon Level 5 is a really good tribute monster. I am kind of lacking in those. At least it's a little bit funky right now, so I decided to include him. And speaking of that, I've got Mass Dragon and Arm Dragon level three. So I can use Mass Dragon to actually tutor Arm Dragon level three out and then the standby phase will come and I can summon level five pretty easy. 
And I went ahead and included Dark Mimic and Mystic Swordsman. I don't really think that they're gonna make a huge impact here, but we'll see. I mean, they're decent monsters and Mystic Swordsman can deal with Man Eater Bug, which I hate. The rest of the monster lineup is pretty much routine and the spell and trap lineup has not changed much, but I did add in Hammer Shot as one additional form of removal. And something I don't think I got to talk about in a previous episode is Different Dimension Capsule to search my deck for something strong like Pot of Greed if I need it. And that's pretty much what I'm working with. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys. So for today's Rare Hunters, I decided to upgrade my fire deck, mostly because we got Ultimate Baseball Kid. But when I was looking through the set list, I saw that Masked Dragon is actually a target for UFO Turtle's effect. And I was like, well, how can I make use of that? Then I realized Element Dragon can be summoned with Masked Dragon, and it gets an effect when you have fire monsters on board. So like, sign me up. I wasn't expecting to pull the horse package, but I really wanted it as a boss monster for my fire deck, and we got it, so this is the list. Also notable mentions to uh, Hammer Shot and Level Up, just hopefully to help my strategy along. I wager ultimate rare greed. I'll wager Prenumbral Soldier Lady. The time has come for our ultimate battle. We will see, Hunter. I've changed my deck quite a bit this time, and I'm very intent on taking your ultimate rare, Greed, for Master Marin. You, you think you're doing that, but I made some changes to my deck as well, and I think Master Merrick will be overjoyed when I present him his first ultimate rares. We shall see, Hunter. We shall see indeed. Draw for turn. I'll start with an oldie but a goodie. Pot of Greed. Oh, what does that do? I'll draw two cards from my deck. I'll set and set two cards face down and end my turn. I'll draw for my turn. I'm gonna start by setting one monster face down on the field. I'll set a card for myself. Next, I'll activate this. Different Dimension Capsule. Yeah, that's right. It's actually from Pharaonic Guardian. When it's activated, I get to pick a card in my deck, banish it, and on my second standby phase after this has been activated, I'll add it to my hand. Playing the long game, huh? The card I pick is Pot of Greed. Ah. All now, right. if Different Dimension Capsule leaves the field, I won't ever get that card back. All right. That's going to end my turn. Cool. Draw. Let's normal summon UFO Turtle. Oh, OK. The fire strategy remains then, I see. I couldn't just let it go. That, that'd have been it was awesome. effective. The fiends are not back. Don't worry. They didn't do me justice last time. But I wonder, 1400 might not be enough. So I'll activate Molten Destruction. Oh, powering up all of your fire monsters? By 500 attack, but their defense is decreased by 400. Well, I don't know how bad that really is, but okay. So now my UFO turtle has 1900. All right, hey guys, Paul here, real quick. I know you're probably enjoying the video, but we noticed that more than half you guys who watch our videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you could do us a really quick favor, change that. All you gotta do is subscribe. It's free, we promise, and it helps us reach a million subscribers. We wanna be the first Yu-Gi-Oh! channel on YouTube to do it. Plus, these videos take a lot of effort to make, so we'd really appreciate it. And it's free, did I mention that? All right, now back to the video. UFO Turtle, attack is face down. You attacked Apprentice Magician. It'll be destroyed, but it'll let me summon a level two or lower spellcaster from my deck. How about my old vindictive magician face down on the field? Mm. So why 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 not make you need it? Okay. Pay a thousand. Activate delinquent duo. Oh, brutal. Alright. You get to have a stab at my hand. We'll send the middle card. It was Mystic Swordsman, level two. Hmm. A card that could be useful for dealing with face down cards. Next, I have to discard, huh? All right, I will send my ceasefire. Oh. To the graveyard. Well, now that you only have one card, I feel pretty good about passing time. All right, I draw. Flip Old Vindictive Magician face up and destroy UFO Turtle with its effect. Goodbye, my turtle. Because it was destroyed by card effect, it does not get its effect. Next, I'm going to tribute Old Vindictive Magician. For Prenumbral Soldier Lady in attack mode. Oh, did not see this coming. She has 2100 attack, and if she battles a light monster, she gains 1000 in damage step. Well, that's not happening in this duel. Enter battle phase and attack you directly for 2100. I'll take it. Prenumbral Soldier Lady, your move. All right. Draw for turn. 
I'll activate from my hand. Premature Burial by paying 800. 800, huh? What card are you targeting? Targeting my UFO turtle. Hmm, well how about I use my Magic Drain? If you're not willing to discard a spell card, you won't be able to use your Premature Burial. Discard Nobleman of Extermination. Okay, it continues. It passes. So I'll summon my UFO turtle to the field. I'll enter battle. Battle entered. I'll have my UFO turtle attack your Penumbral Soldier Lady. And right. I'll activate on declaration, backfire. Okay, so what does this do? When a fire monster is destroyed by battle, no, just destroyed and sent to the graveyard, I inflict 500 damage to you. Okay. Well, UFO turtle will be destroyed. It'll take 200 damage and I'll take 500 damage. And then UFO Turtle's effect activates special summoning a fire monster with 1500 less attack to the field. Let's summon. Oh yeah, and your premature burial is also destroyed. Oh yeah, come on. I'll summon Solar Flare Dragon. Solar Flare Dragon. I didn't get to talk about it in the last episode, but this is really a workhorse for this deck. I want to get the Solar Flare lock, but more so than anything else, I just want to get that, that residual 500 damage off as much as I possibly can. This is a burn deck, folks. Oh, okay, he's familiar. And my Solar Flare Dragon has 2,000 attack underneath Molten Destruction. Still short of your Soldier Lady. Not a problem. Solar Flare Dragon, attack Penumbral Soldier Lady. Okay. On attack, Book of Moon. I flip her face down. Oh, so now that she's face down, she'll be destroyed in this battle. And then, main phase two, I'll banish my UFO turtle from my graveyard to special summon my spirit of flames. And now that I have a power monster on board, you will not be able to attack my solar flare dragon next turn. Uh, deadly. I'll move to end phase. Solar flare dragon's effect activates to burn you for 500. I'm at 7,000 to your 3,900. I'll end my turn. All right, I draw for turn. Since it's my second standby phase after using different dimension capsule, it goes to the graveyard and I'll retrieve pot of greed. It's time to go ahead and activate it. Do you know what that means, Duelist? I'm not sure, honestly. Part of Greed is a spell card that lets me draw two cards from Whoa. my deck. Uh, okay. Solar Flare Dragon can't be attacked in Spirit of Flames. It gains attack during the battle phase, or during my battle phase. Gains attack during your battle phase, okay. Well, I'll start by paying a thousand life points to activate Confiscation. Wow. This lets me send a card from your hand to the graveyard, but you only have one. I do. What's it gonna be? Oh, a compulsory evacuation device. With that gone, now I can use this. Well, can't okay, use it. I'll set one card face down in the field and pass turn to you. What could you be planning? Plenty. Draw! We'll move to battle phase. Battle phase it is. So during the battle phase, my spirit, spirit of flames increases the attack by 300. Okay, so, so he's at 2,500. 2, okay. Bring it on, Hunter. I highly doubt I need 2,500 to swing over your puny monster. I doubt you do either. Solar Flare Dragon, attack his face down. You attacked Masked Dragon. Oh. When it's destroyed in battle, it'll let me summon a dragon from my deck. I'll summon another Masked Dragon, who I just remembered is actually losing 400 defense points because That's of right. molten they destruction. Weak. They very weak. Not that it was surviving. I'll have my Spirit of Flames attack your Masked Dragon. All right, Mass Dragon is destroyed, and its effect will activate again, allowing me to summon this from my deck. My Armed Dragon, level three. Oh, because it right can level up in the standby phase. So I'll be able to oh, eventually do some okay. leveling up. All right, all right, all right. I did not quite see that coming. Hmm. On my next standby phase, my Armed Dragon will be able to level up into Big Brother, Armed Dragon level five. Fine, I move to end phase, Solar Flare Dragon, burn him again. 500 damage is nothing. I draw for turn. All right, during my standby phase, I'm going to send Armed Dragon level three to the graveyard to summon from my deck, your deck, Armed Dragon level five. Armed Dragon level five is probably the overall best of the level monsters in this set, and so I was really glad I was actually able to use it. You can discard a card and pop opponent's monsters. But the main thing is, it actually just functions as a really good tribute monster. That said though, being able to get it out from a level up with Arm Dragon level three is not too shabby either. Thank goodness it was on the top of my deck. 
Well, I mean, it had to be in the deck. I'm just thank, like, thank goodness I hadn't drawn it. That would have sucked. All right, say hello to Armed Dragon level five, Duelist. This effect actually lets me send a card from my hand to the graveyard. Destroy a monster on your field with attack equal to or less than the attack of the sent monster, which I don't think I can actually do right now. But that's okay. <laughs> my monsters are simply too powerful. For Thanks. now. Well, that's currently right now, they're actually not too powerful. I'll activate. I'll enter the battle phase and have, this is a decreased wind, right? okay. I'll have Arm Dragon level five. Attack your spirit of flames. All right, I'll take 200, but you'll take 500. Oh yeah, backfire. I can't forget about that. Hmm. I'll go to main phase two, duelist. We'll set one monster face down on the field and then activate my Ikibayo Drakmord ah. on your solar flare dragon. It won't be able to attack and at the end of the second turn, it'll be destroyed and this will return to my hand. Your move, duelist. Draw, normal summon. Horus, the Black Flame Dragon, level four. Oh, okay, I didn't know you actually were going to be able to do the full Horus thing. I'm assuming you can. Maybe I can. We'll see if it's you a, can. It's a big if around here. All right. Okay. Enter battle. My Horus is boosted by my Molten Destruction. It's 2100, it attacks your face down. You attack, my Magician of Faith. Even though it's destroyed, its flip effect will let me get a spell from my graveyard in my hand. I wonder what spell card I want right now. <laughs> I'll get my Pot of Greed back to my hand. I'll move to my end phase and activate both my monster's abilities. Solar Flare Dragon will burn you for 500. And my Horus, the Black Flame Dragon level four, because it destroyed a monster by battle, will send itself to the graveyard and level up to Horus level six. Ooh, this is trouble. Okay, so this Horus is unaffected by spell cards. So even my Ikebayo Drakmord can do nothing about him. I'll end my turn. I draw. I'll start by activating a spell card. You might know what it is and what it does. It's Pot of Greed. I draw two cards from my deck, in case you weren't aware. I, I, I'm aware, I am aware. Draw. It was in the memo. Mm, there's trouble afoot because... Your monster's only level five, but mine's level six. <laughs> That's strange you say that because my monster, for some reason, has more attack points. Not no. with Molten Destruction. I'll say mine's people, definitely but, stronger. You know. <laughs> All right, well, I can't attack Solar Flare Dragon, but that matters very little as it will be destroyed next turn anyway. It looks like my only option is set a card face down and switch Armed Dragon level five to defense position for now. And I'll also set one card face down in the field. Your move. I'm so glad you didn't realize I don't have a Pyro on the field so you could have attacked him. Ah, okay. Draw for turn. I could have attacked him. But I want my Ikibayo Drakmord back in my hand anyway, so it's okay. I'll normal summon Blazing and Pachi. Oh, okay. Very All dangerous. right, let's move to battle. Blazing and Pachi attack his armed dragon. All right, armed dragon will be destroyed. There's no point in the waiting around to find out. Horus, attack his face down. All right, my monster is just a mad dog of darkness. Oh, all right, cool. Destroy hey. us into the graveyard. It's great. Then I'll move to my end phase. Okay, I do it. Activate both my monster's effects. Solar Flare Dragon will burn you for 500. And now, I'll level up into Horus, the Black Flame Dragon, level eight. Hmm, a dangerous monster indeed. But that also means that my Ikebayo Drakmord will destroy your Solar Flare Dragon. I will. Banish a light and a dark oh monster my from my graveyard in order to special summon this my chaos sorcerer to the field in attack mode That's chaos sorcerer is really just old faithful at this point i mean this is in these older duels a really good way of like surprising your opponent with something that moves beyond just a normal summon and it outs pretty much any threat at this point in Yu-Gi-Oh. so good stuff That's fair. That, that, that does chaos fair. sorcerer activate effect i target horus the black flame dragon level eight and banish it from the field and from the game forever Goodbye, Horus. It was fun while it lasted, Duelist. It lasted less than a time. Yeah, I didn't even make a full turn on the field. That's okay. That's not all, after all. I also activate Ikibayo Drakmord on your Blazing Impachi. Mm -mm. Just in case you had any plans of using it. I did. I'll set one card face down on the field and end my turn. Chaos Sorcerer can't attack the turn it uses its effect. Draw! 
Normal summon Mass Dragon. I'll enter battle and have my Mass Dragon attack your Chaos Sorcerer. So he's got 1900. That's right. It'll be destroyed by battle. All right, so you'll take 400 damage and I'll take 500 from Backfire, right? Yes, and then Mass Dragon's effect will special summon a dragon monster with 1500 or less attack. <laughs> 1500 or less attack, I summon Element Dragon to the field. Element Dragon, now I know Paul's not expecting this. Mass Dragon into this, I mean, come on, where'd that synergy even come from? It gets boosted to 2000? I was like, this is, this is simple, this is light work. It doesn't get a bonus for Molten Destruction, but just another big monster that my opponent won't be expecting, this could really help me win the game. Interesting, okay. Element Dragon says there's a fire monster on the field. It gains 500 attack. Ah, so he's 2,000. That's right. And I'll have my Element Dragon attack your face down. All right, you attack Sangin. Oh. It'll be destroyed and it'll let me add a monster from my deck to my hand. I know a cool monster I could get, but I'll have a little bit more fun and get my Dark Mimic LV1. Wow. All right, so I know that Dark Mimic is probably not really a card I should have even bothered including in my deck, but I thought it would be really fun to see if I could resolve its full effect. It does let you draw a card, and if it somehow manages to make it a full turn or more, then you can summon LV3, and then when that dies, you can get two cards, and I'm already convincing myself it's a terrible idea as I say it out loud, but hey, maybe we can pull it all off. Because we're leveling up in this duel. So what's all about? I, I, this will get added to my Is it gonna level hand. up though? We'll see. <laughs> so we'll see if it will level up in this duel. I just wanna find out if it can. Well, since you're Blazing and Pachi can't attack, does that end your turn, Hunter? It does. Excellent. I draw one card. I will enter the battle phase and have Chaos Sorcerer attack. Your Element Dragon is 2,300 attack points. Goodbye, Element Dragon. So it'll take 300 damage. I'll go to main phase two and set a monster face down. I wonder what it can be, Hunter. Draw for turn. I'll normal summon Ultimate Baseball Kid. Ultimate Baseball Kid, a new addition to the deck. I wasn't quite sure how much use I'd get out of it, but being able to get into 2,500 attack easily and it burns for 500, it pairs perfectly with my Solar Flare. This is a burn deck. Oh, okay. It gains a thousand attack for each other fire monster on the field. So it gains 500 to be at 15, and then 500 for Molten Destruction, so it's another 2,000 attack monster. 2,000 attack, huh? Enter battle. Battle entered. Ultimate Baseball Kid, attack his face down. You attacked my Dark Mimic. When it's split face up, I draw one card. And that's it. And it goes. I won't be summoning Dark Mimic LV3 after all. <laughs> Fun while it lasted. And then, main phase two, I'll use my Baseball Kid's effect. I'll send another fire monster I control to the graveyard to burn you for 500 damage. Oh, clever, clever, which means Ikebio Drachmord is destroyed as well. Yeah, but now my ultimate Baseball Kid's down to just 1,000. That is true. I'll end my turn. I'll draw for mine. Let's activate Chaos Sorcerer's effect and banish your ultimate baseball kid from the field. Oh, you just don't want to get burned. I don't want to get burned. And uh, um, next, I will. I'll set one monster face down, another card face down, and end my turn. All right, draw. Did I put this in my deck? Are you confused, Hunter? Yeah. What does this do? Mm. Pot of greed. Draw a spell two card cards. that allows you to take two cards from the top of your deck and add them to your hand. Could that be what you activated there, Duel? Yes. And now I have three cards, and these three cards may keep me in the game. We shall see, won't we? I activate Hammer Shot. Okay. Destroy the face-up attack position monster with the highest attack. Well, goodbye, Chaos Sorcerer. It was fun while it lasted. No more of your banishing shenanigans. I probably should have just attacked with this, but that's okay. I'll set a monster face down and end my turn. Setting a monster defensive, are we? I draw for turn. I'm gonna find out when I normal summon my Berserk Gorilla. It breathes fire. It should be in my It deck. really should be a fire monster and gain <laughs> 500. Can we just agree that it just gains 500? No, we can't. Enter the battle phase. Hmm, actually, before I do, I'll... Yeah, uh, uh, before judge. I do... I'll flip up my Spirit Reaper into attack position. Oh. All right, I enter the battle phase and Berserk Gorilla will attack your face down monster. You hit UFO Turtle. Darn. So, my UFO Turtle will activate its effect, but you'll also get burned for 500. 500. Okay. 
I see you, dude. And now, see. special summon from my deck, UFO Turtle. All right, well, I will just set a card face down and in my turn. Draw. Normal summon my Solar Flare Dragon. Oh, he's back. Fun. It's always gonna be here. Solar Flare Dragon attacks Spirit Reaper. Hmm, I'll take, I'll take 1800 damage. Spirit Reaper won't be destroyed. It won't. Oh wait, 1700 damage. Oh yeah, 17, 17. Yeah, 1700 damage. And I will move to end phase. Okay, so I take 500 damage. Burn him! 500 it is. Put me at 300. I don't see how you can possibly get out of this situation. I'll end my turn. We will see. I draw for mine. Tribute. Arp. My spirit reaper to summon Jinzo to the field in attack position. Ah! And that means that Backfire's effect will be negated. No. Got him out. Not only that, but I still have more attacking to do, don't I? So, let's use Jinzo and go to the battle phase. Jinzo will attack Solar Flare Dragon. I do not control any pyros, so that is legal. So you'll take 400 damage. And Berserk Gorilla has to attack, so I'll be attacking your UFO Turtle. UFO Turtle will activate effect. That is fine. There's no hope. There's no But I'll summon Solar Flare Dragon. Oh, it is summoned in attack mode, though. Oh, yeah. That's right. Just worth noting. Okay. Well, that's going to end my turn. All right. Off return. Hmm. I don't see any reason to take any extra risks. So, I'll set a card face down, and I'll attempt to move the end phase. Hmm. I will. Dangerous, dangerous. I didn't expect Solar Flare Dragon to show up and ruin my plans. I only have 300 life points. I should have uh, not let it get this bad. I will. Wait, you're allowed to go to your end phase there. Duelist. Activate Solar Flare Dragon's effect. Uh, I take 500 and lose the duel. I, that's the <laughs> one card I had not foreseen. I did have face down cards I could have used, but I knew that Book of Moon wouldn't have worked since you'd have flipped it back face up. If you did flip it back face up, I had bottomless trap hole. But Jinzo's in the field, so I wouldn't have been able to use that. So I was truly out of options. <laughs> ah, good game, Hunter. The burn wins! The burn wins! All right, well, good game. Looks like you're the proud owner now of a prenumbral soldier lady. I don't know if that's something that every <laughs> duelist wants in his collection. But Master Merrick just wants rare cards, and now I have two to give. That's going to be it for this episode of The Rare Hunters. In the next episode, we'll be opening Rise of Destiny. Ooh, it sounds like it's my destiny to get a win streak three going. We'll see. The current score is five to seven, I believe. So I've got a couple more chances to even the score. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, of course, and give us a super thanks, please. It's very expensive. But also leave a comment. What was your favorite card or play of this duel? We'll see you guys in the next one. Pastor.